how important do you think it is in the world that we have figures like a, like a Brian Cox or someone to bring it to the mainstream or, or to the to the average day person? Yeah, so I, I'm of two minds there. First, I think it's great. It's great. Uh, I think, as I understand it, Brian Cox is more famous for what he does in the UK than Carl Sagan ever was, even in the United States. Brian Cox also, having been a literal rock star for having a number one song on the charts, what was it? Things will get better. There's some things song. Things will only get better. By things will only get better. Right. So there's a literal rock star, okay, uh, and figurative rock star. So I think this is all. I mean, why? I can't imagine life without it. But the other side of me says, it should never be that singular. It shouldn't require the one person who makes it all work. There should be a hundred people on that landscape. And imagine that's like saying, oh, we have this one firefighter on the other side of town and they're the best ever and they'll put out everybody's fires. Well, no, they're not. Or they'll put out a lot of fires. <laughs> we need every, we, this, this ability, this talent, this receptivity needs to happen at a much deeper level than the singular talents represented by people such as Brian Cox, uh, Carl Sagan or, or others. So... I look forward to a day where you would pick among 10 people who influenced you that way, not just the one person. Because imagine life without that one person. What would that even be like? Okay, that's not a good world. All right, now there are a few others. There's uh, uh, Jim Kahili. Uh, uh, Jim Kahili. Kahili. <laughs> I forgot how to, how to spell and pronounce his name. Uh, he's another one. I think he's at, based at Oxford. He's a physicist. Does a lot of public um, things. Wrote books. Uh, all, all kinds of... There's a, there's a fellow in Italy who's written many best-selling books. And is interviewed often. And he's a physicist. So such people are out there. But sort of the singularity of what you find uh, in Brian Cox, I think society would be better off if that were common rather than singular. So what, what drew you to, to your fascination with the universe at a young age? What did it do for a young Neil deGrasse Tyson looking up at the night sky? What, what did that do for you on a personal level? Oh, well, first of all, I didn't have a night sky. All right. I don't know where you grew up in London, uh, if that's where you grew up. But I grew up in New York City. There's no sky. Wow. There's no, you know, there's light pollution. And at the time, there was air pollution, significant air smog. Uh, also, when you look up, we have a lot of tall buildings, so most sight lines, even if you're looking up, will hit a building. So in New York City, no one has a relationship with the night sky. And the only way you can attain that is a visit to your local planetarium, which is what I did. I visited the Hayden Planetarium in New York City, where I now serve as director. So that's come sort of full circle there. But yeah, you sit down in the chair and the dim the lights and the stars come out. I've said this before, I, I thought it was a hoax. There aren't that many stars in the night sky. I know, I've looked from the Bronx. I grew up in the Bronx, one of the five counties that comprise New York City. And so I later I would see the sky as nature intended uh, from the Caribbean, from deep within Pennsylvania, far away from city lights. And even to this day on mountaintops, we have the finest telescopes in the world. And I look up and I see the canopy, this brilliant starlit canopy. And I say to myself, that reminds me of the Hayden Planetarium. <laughs> it's a sad fact, but it's true. So that's how that, so, so it was that first encounter. And I was hooked ever since I was nine years old.